Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. We are still in the process of trying to understand how to push geometric problems into algebra. We are, as we have noticed by now, we're doing more and more algebra as we go along and less and less geometry. That's kind of the idea of algebraic geometry. So algebra like easy, geometry cool, but difficult. Algebra easy, but maybe not so cool. Anyway, um, we are trying to go from, um, well, geometry to algebra and along the way eventually we need to discuss the question about maps between our geometric objects because kind of the whole point of the modern version of mathematics if you like something like category theory or something it's always that you highlight the maps between objects so what is more important than the space itself are the maps between the spaces what is more important than topological spaces are continuous maps and right? what is more important than uh, the real line are continuous maps from the real line to itself, which we usually call a graph, something like that. If x goes to x squared. And yeah, we would like to understand kind of what is the correct notion of this in the setting of um, varieties, because that's what we are talking about. So we want, essentially, we want maps from one variety. x is probably a bad symbol for a variety, because I always go with v. v to w. Uh, we want to map between two varieties. Um, but we are not quite there yet. Let's start with an easier problem. So this is like not for us yet, but we can replace W by a much easier thing. We can go to the ground field, which is, of course, a variety, just a very boring one. And this kind of plays the role of something like a, a dual map in linear algebra. And these are usually called regular functions. And they play an important role because like dual maps in linear algebra play an important role. Regular functions should play an important role. And I try to motivate the slightly weird definition. Well, the definition will be slightly weird. Bear with me. Um, I try to motivate it along continuous functions that we hopefully all like and know. Um, you don't need to like them. You just need to know what they are, I guess. Uh, I still hope you like continuous functions because they're actually pretty nice, you know? Anyway, um, so they play an important role, but they have, as I said, a little bit of an obscure definition. Um, but believe me, it's kind of the correct definition. But I also hope to motivate a little bit why you should think that this is a correct definition. So before we go there, let's mimic whatever continuous functions. I hope nobody is offended by the claim that continuous functions play, play a crucial role in all of mathematics. It's one of the first things you actually meet in your um, mathematical life. Maybe not using the name, but anyway, some, some nice things you can draw. Continuous, if you want, means just you can draw it without a uh, removing your cursor and that's that's so you don't, don't need to lift your cursor or don't need to lift your pen or whatever don't need to do it to do the chalk yeah you could draw them in one continuous go and what is so cool about that definition and that's something we really want to mimic is that it's completely local so here's a continuous function defined on a, a larger space but i can just check continuity kind of locally in a little neighborhood, because only in that neighborhood it needs to be continuous, it needs to be connected like type of curve. So if you want the local picture, the, the standard picture of continuity, the epsilon delta thingy, you can always check that in a local con uh, neighborhood and it's actually defined on a local neighborhood. So kind of locality is a very crucial condition on continuous maps. And similarly, what is also very crucial is that you don't want to necessarily define them as a map from R to R itself, but maybe just on some open subset of R, um, like here's a here's a really important continuous function, so 1 over x, but 1 over x is not really defined at the origin. What is division by x? Uh, what is division by x? And division by x is 1 over x. What is division by 0? Division by 0 is um, a, a bit of a fishy operation. Uh, let's call the result infinity, but it's a bit of a fishy operation on the real numbers. So you kind of take out that point and you have it defined on everything except the point or origin here in this case, zero, zero, and you have it nicely defined on an open subset. So a lot of interesting continuous functions are actually only defined on open subsets. So we want to build that into our definition. Okay, so let's go. And that's, that's, that's kind of the motivation. And now I want to have another motivation because we can, on, can only motivate you so far, of course, uh, but motivation is always crucial. Never forget motivation. As soon as you've forgotten motivation, um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> so 
as right geometry works with polynomials i hope that is clear at this point so really we like polynomials so if you're still in the, in the whatever tense video or whatever this is um, and you don't like polynomials this might be the wrong series for you so clearly polynomials should um, be a, some nice version of maps for us um, but maybe even a little bit better if you think about going from like the integers to the rational numbers the process is called localization you essentially allow quotients and for many many reasons the rational numbers are much better I give it a check mark and then the real number uh, the real numbers than the integers they are like nicer behaved than whatever and in general localization of rings are nicer behaved than the rings themselves so maybe what we really want to consider are not just polynomials but localizations of polynomials these are called rational functions so something like something like this right so some polynomial divided by some polynomial and as you can see in those pictures they're usually defined on open subsets namely the points you need to take out are exactly the roots of the denominator so if you have something like f divided by g um, you should definitely take out the roots of g because we don't want to divide by zero division by zero is for experts not for me um and but we're kind of lucky because the variety is always closed at our topology so if you take it out we get open sets and it's kind of about how open sets work so we can always have this analogy of taking out the, um, the poles or the singularities of a rational function and we get a, a nice function defined on an open subset of our space from before and that's what we will do hope that makes some sense so rational polynomials yeah sure rational function a bit nicer than polynomials let's try to work with rational functions that's a good idea that's an actually really good idea and it almost gets you there and the one thing that makes it a little bit fishy is that it's a non-local condition so being a quotient being a rational function is somewhat a non-local condition and it would be much nicer to have a local condition to check i give you an example why this is not local um, at the, in the last slide and this is really what mimics the locality of continuous maps so it will look a bit strange in the definition itself but keep in mind that this definition mimics the locality of continuous maps and it's become not much nicer because now we can check conditions uh, around a point instead of on the whole space we'll now see what that means so a regular function is we have some fn variety because we're considering those spaces for 10 lectures now <laughs> so let's go for that and we have some open subset because of this uh well we wanted to define on open subsets and a function to the ground field is regular if it's an f divided by g where f and g are polynomials for all um yeah neighborhoods for, for, there's a neighborhood for every point such as they are local and this is what i really should write but this is a little bit of a mouthful so instead i write they are uh, f divided by g on up and then <laughs> sometimes i even drop the subscript here f, f of p g of p so f and g depend on the point fine and what we get is um the ring of regular functions which is usually denoted by this muscal um, o font and it's like a really important object. This is just all functions from U to the ground field, very similar to what you see in everywhere in mathematics, something to the ground field, some dual type of maps. And it has a pointwise operation. It has pointwise addition, pointwise multiplication. So it is actually uh, an algebra. And in the usual way of not saying that it is an algebra, it's usually called a ring, not an algebra. But it is actually the algebra of regular functions with pointwise operation. And the study of this algebra will turn out to be like extremely extremely important in algebraic geometry i hope i motivated the definition enough it looks a bit strange but it really is just we take poly quotients of polynomials that make sense in our setting because we have polynomials and we do that pointwise because we want to mimic this or locally because we want to mimic this locality of well of the continuous functions and this really makes a difference so here i have a plot of a function which um it's just i just use piecewise here it is a, a, a quotient on the, the real the positive part and it's a quotient on the negative part but it's not a local quotient. Uh, sorry it's not a global quotient it's not globally a rational function it's just locally a rational function so this really makes a subtle difference um and here maybe a, a more down to earth example which i can't plot anymore that's why i went with this one in uh in four space 
So you can easily have something like a uh, variety, some vanishing sets, some not very difficult one in four variables. And our open set is where one of them is not zero because we want to divide by one of them. And you can define a regular function by being a quotient whenever x is non-zero, you can divide by x. Whenever z is non-zero, you can divide that by z. So this is a regular function. It's locally a quotient. Yeah? It's locally a rational function. But it's not globally a quotient. It's not globally a rational function. You just need to look at the corresponding points to convince yourself that this is not a global function. Um, and, and really, there's a difference between local and global here. That's what this example illustrates. But it turns out that the local definition is somehow nicer in practice. And that's a ring of regular functions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.